Peace of the Lord be with you. It is so good to see you this morning, my friends. We pray God's blessings upon you as we begin now our Sunday morning devotional. Shall we bow our heads and in our own private, personal ways invite the Spirit of the Lord to come within our hearts and minds this morning that we might worship Him in spirit and in truth. Let us pray. Amen. Amen. We begin this morning with a song by Tracy. We also are happy to see our brother uh, Keith Shobai. Yes, praise who the Lord. Also <laughs> had surgery recently and been missing from the clock and back this morning. Amen. Amen. Shall we bow our heads? Holy and wise God. We come humbly bowed before your throne of grace this morning. We come, O oh Lord, first of all, asking for your forgiveness. 
Because, Lord, we know that in some way or another we've not done that which you've asked us to do. We've not gone where you've asked us to go. We've not said what you've asked us to say. But we thank you that you're the kind of God that understands us even better than we understand ourselves. We thank you that you're the kind of God that knows us from head to toe. You know our coming out. You know our going in. And most of all, Lord, we are thankful that you are a forgiving God. You are quicker to, to forgive than you are to punish. And so, Lord, we come just bow humbly before you. We come as our ancestors used to say, as a bad child before good parents. We come, Lord, again with grateful hearts. We come, Lord, asking you to hear the concerns of our hearts and our minds. For Lord, we've called so many by name this morning. And we know that there are many, many others. But even in bringing these things before you, Lord, we know that you know all about it. So we come, Lord, asking you to help us to understand. Help us, Lord, to be patient. Help us, Lord, to put our trust in you. Help us, Lord, to understand that which we don't understand. We come, Lord, praying for our church. Yes, Lord, we are few in number, but Lord, we're still here. Yes. We're still holding up the bloodstained banner. We're still saying, Lord, that you, you still sit high in the blood. Yes. We come praying, Lord, for Apostle Capus, who is with us this morning. Mm -hmm. We ask, O oh God, that you would touch him and use him. We thank you for Reggie, Lord. We ask that you continue, Lord, to increase his faith and continue, Lord, to help him grow. We pray for Tracy. We pray for Diane, Lord. For you know what she's going through. We ask that you would put your loving arms of protection around her, that you would give her the strength that she needs day by day. And not for a long prayer, Lord. But we come, Lord, just asking that you would lay your hands upon us, that you would bless us, that you would send us where you would have us to go. Help us to be your church. Help us to be your people. And Lord, we give you all the praise. We give you all the glory because these things are rightfully yours. Naked, Lord, we came into this world and naked we shall be. The only thing that we'll be able to carry with us when we come into your glory, when we come, Lord, to stand before the judgment bar, the only thing that we can carry with us then, Lord, is what we have done for you. We ask, O oh God, that you would touch us and bless us this day, for this is our prayer. Amen. Amen.
trust in the Lord. Amen. So I die. Good morning. The Lord be with you. This morning's gospel lesson is found on page 50 in your pupil, pew Bibles. Mark, the 13th chapter. First verse through the 8th. Page 50. Mark, the 13th chapter. First verse through the 8th. Let us stand. As he came out of the temple, one of his disciples said to him, Look, teacher, what large stones and what large buildings. Then Jesus asked him, Do you see these great buildings? Not one stone will be left here upon another. All will be thrown down. When he was sitting on the Mount of Olives opposite the temple, Peter, James, John, and Andrew asked him privately, Tell us, when will this be? And what will be the sign that all these things are about to be accomplished? Then Jesus began to say to them, Beware that no one leads you astray. Many will come in my name and say, I am he. And they will lead many astray. When you hear of wars and rumors of wars, do not be alarmed. This must take place. But the end is still to come. For nation will rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom. There will be earthquakes in various places. There will be famines. This is but the beginning of the birth pangs. The word of God for the people of God.
I'm gonna take that. Yeah. You know, you get these voices, these fiery thoughts, as the Bible calls them. And then there's that still small voice of the Holy Spirit that now leads you. He's a counselor, he's a guide. And here in the book of John, we had the Jews challenging Jesus. And it goes back and forth throughout the entire chapter where Jesus was sharing wisdom and knowledge but he was speaking in parables. And he came to the point where he let them know that you don't understand because you don't belong to the Father. You don't hear me because you don't belong to the Father. And then he got to the point where he really kind of got frustrated and he said, well, if you don't believe me and you don't believe my Father, then believe the works. You can't deny a miracle. You can't deny healing. You can't deny the blind that can see. So he said, believe the works of anything. And still, they wanted to pick up the stones and stone him. And it's all because they did not know the voice of the Lord. So how do we know the voice of the Lord? It's not something that man can teach you. Man only can tell you that which I will share with you today. But you have to learn the voice of the Lord on your own. It's between you and God. That's the only way. Because in a relationship, as you know, from human beings to human beings, when we talk, a lot of times we have the tendency to over-talk people. Because we want to do all the talking and want them to listen. <laughs> but in a conversation, there's reciprocation, whereas in, we get a chance to talk to one another, but then we need to close our mouth and then listen to what they're saying to us. That's how a relationship is developed. And so being able to share wisdom, knowledge, and understanding Sometimes we have to be quiet and just listen. Even with our relationship with the Father, I know we pray and we pray all the time and we pray when we're in need and we pray for everything that seems to come against us when we get afraid, when things aren't going right. But the question is in the midst of it, do we stop and pause and listen for the answer? Hmm. And when we get the answer, do we really listen to what God is saying? Because a lot of times God will give you the answer, but because it's not the answer that you want, you tend to ignore it. In some cases, you be like, okay, devil, be quiet, I'm not going to do that. Because we feel that we're a little bit less, that we can't take the heat. But God says to love your enemy. Pray for them that despite we use you. So in order to be able to do that, we must know his voice. And so there is a little guy at the time by the name of Samuel. And I'm going to go to First Samuel chapter 3, but Samuel's mother was Hannah. And she begged and pleaded God for a child. And so she conceived Samuel. And Samuel was brought up in the church, serving the Lord under Eli, the priest. And so it came a time where they were in the temple and God was calling Samuel's name. And Samuel heard the voice, but he thought it was a man. Hmm. Mm -hmm. And so God called Samuel again. Samuel finally got up and went to the priest Eli and asked him, did you call me? He said, no, I did not call you. So you see, we have a tendency at times that when God speaks out to us, we have a tendency to look to man to get confirmation instead of looking to God. So Samuel being wise at this point, now Eli told him, it's the Lord that's calling you, go back to sleep. And when he calls you, and if he calls you again, then tell him, here am I. That's right. And so God called Samuel again. And Samuel said, here I am, Lord, speak. And the Lord spoke a word to Samuel that changed his entire life. It was his calling to become a prophet. It was his calling to be able to help God's people. And that's why it's so important for us to be able to hear the voice of the Lord. 
Because it came down and it not only helps people, but it will help you in your life, in your life situations and things that goes on. Especially when we have these distractions, we have these, these, these issues and problems in your homes, on your jobs. And, you know, we have all these things that go on and yet we get frustrated, but we never pause and stop and listen to what God says for us to do. So now Samuel now, as he heard what God had said, there was one thing that moved me to understand how Samuel was able to grasp this. And I'm going back to the New Testament where it says in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 16, for who had known the mind of the Lord that he may instruct him? So in that particular scripture, and that's part A, I'll get to part B in a minute. But in that, that lets me know that none of us as human beings are more wiser than the Lord. Amen. And that God is all wise, all knowing. So in order for us to serve a God like him, we must be able to hear him. Do we know the voice of the Lord? That's what you have to ask yourself that question. Because if you can answer it in a yes, it's not that we won't have troubles, we won't have problems, we won't have issues, but we would know how to act accordingly, that God would help us to get delivered from the things that are attacking us. Amen. So now we see now that we are not wiser than God, but we need to learn to listen and hear from God. Having the understanding that he says that no man can pluck you out of his hand. No man, so therefore you are in a situation in a place where man cannot even pull you out of the hand of God. That's how much of a grip that God has on you. That's how much he loves you. As we know that he gave his only begotten son. He just didn't do it just because he felt like it. He did it because we needed to be saved. And so here, we are not smarter than God, but it says, but we must have the mind of Christ. So how do I have the mind of Christ? If we take a look back in our lives and see how some of the awful things that we've thought, some of the awful things that we've done, some of the awful things that we have said in our lifetime, is that the mind of Christ? So now we see as we mature and become older, we really need to know the voice of the Lord. In order to do that, we must have the mind of Christ. But in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 16, it says, but we have the mind of Christ. It doesn't say we might have, or do you have the mind of Christ? Because if you are saved and you have salvation and you believe and trust in the Lord and you receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior and Jesus dwells on the inside of you, you have the mind of Christ. It's up to us to be able to put our flesh under subjection to retransform our mind to the word of God. That we will be able now to utilize Christ's mind instead of our own. And when we begin to listen to our spirit man, our mind begins to have a war, because that's where the war is. The war is in the mind. And the flesh wants to be in charge because, you know, we were born in sin and iniquity, and as we come up, we learn to tell about yourself, tell what's on your mind. You know, that's how we act. But when we become saved, God said, not so. He said, be humble, be meek, be kind. See, just the opposite. If we look at the walk of Jesus, when Jesus was walking through, Jesus sinned not one time. He was not mean, he was not unseemly, but yet you had people that want to stone him, want to kill him, all because he was kind. And he took everything to include going to the cross and dying for our sins. And he did not mumble, not one negative word. So if he said, I can do this, and I'm in you, and me and the Father are one, you can do the same thing. And what I come to find out is that there's a standard in the Word of God. And through the course of time, man has belittled God's standard to where we say we're not perfect. But the Bible says, once you become in Christ, he said, be ye perfect, for I am perfect. And that word perfect means to be mature. 
to grow. So God sets a standard and he does not lower the standards as we do here on the earth. Because see, we have rules and regulations and then when we feel like it, we can turn the rule, we can twist the rule for this one and for that one. God doesn't change his, his rule. There's a divine order in the kingdom of God and it's set by God. So he doesn't change his standards, but he, he leads us and he guides us to be able to live up to the standard. That it will raise us up above sin. It will raise us up above the enemy. That's why he said the enemy will be at your feet. And the enemy has to raise up and you have to bow down in order for the enemy to even see you face to face. So therefore, if you continue to stand therefore with your whole arm of God and be able to withstand the wiles of the enemy and listen to the voice of the Lord, then now you will find that you will have more power in your spirit than you ever had before. Because when you begin to listen to God, now God will move on your behalf. When you begin to worship and praise God, he will begin to move on your behalf. We don't just praise and worship God in the sanctuary. We praise and worship God any time that we acknowledge that he's there with you. So if we do this on a daily basis, if we do this in our quiet time, and we begin to tell people that, I don't have time right now, I need to get off the phone. I don't have time right now, I'm gonna turn my TV off. I don't have time right now, I'm not gonna argue with you. I don't have time right now, I'm not gonna get into this gossip. I'm not gonna get into these things. But what I am going to do is, I got some issues in my life, and I need to learn how to hear the voice of the Lord. Because I need to be able to pray for someone and then be healed. I need to be able to have wisdom so when someone calls, I can give them godly wisdom instead of the worldly wisdom. Because worldly wisdom won't get you anywhere. But the wisdom of God is everything that we need. And so how do I know that I am now renewing my mind in Christ? Well, Philippians chapter 4, verse 8, it says, Finally, brother, whatsoever things that are true, whatsoever things that are honest, whatsoever things that are just, whatsoever things that are pure, whatsoever things that are lovely, whatsoever things that are good and poor, if there be any virtue, if there be any praise, think on these things. Then Paul goes on to tell us, say, those things which you have both learned and received and heard and seen in me, this is what you do, and the peace of God shall be with you. So we see that now that we follow the word of God and hear the voice of the Lord and obey him, you will now have peace in your life. Amen. And you can have peace in the midst of chaos. See, peace don't mean that everything is quiet. Right. Peace is when now where there is chaos, but you are the only one that's not afraid. You're the only one that's not reacting like everyone else is reacting that you know God has your back and he's there protecting you and keeping you. And that you can now think clearly and have an understanding that no weapon formed against me shall prosper. And that I can stand and I will get through this. And God said to child, like, go over your life as you sit and listen right now and look at how many times you've been in trouble, how many times you've been sick, how many times you've been down, and look where you're at right now. That should answer that question. Mm -hmm. That God brought you through all of those things up to this point right now. So therefore it shows that no man can pluck you out of his hands. Mm -hmm. Do you know the voice of the Lord? So Jesus now says, he knows the sheep by name. He knows each and every one of us. The word of God also said that he knows how many here is in your head. We serve an awesome God. And that's why Jesus said, my father is the greatest. They didn't even call him good. He said, I'm not good. He said, only my father's good. Wow. So in this, do we really know the voice of the Lord? In Psalm 107, it goes through many trials where folks were in boat wrecks and trials were coming and there were wars and 
different things, but it was always when people got to their wit's end that they would call on the Lord and he would always deliver them. Every last one of them. God is a deliverer, but the only way he can deliver us and keep us is that we have to hear his voice. We have to hear what he is saying to us and then obey him. If we don't know the voice of the Lord, it's never too late to find out what it is. Because as you're sitting here now in this temple and gathered with the body of Christ, all that you have to do is ask God, how do you communicate with me? Because he communicates with everyone differently. This is the type of God that we have. Some folks can hear God audibly, just as I'm speaking to you. But then now God has that still small voice where he speaks to your spirit, but then you have to pay attention in your soul to be able to understand whether it's your mind talking to you or whether it's the spirit of the living God talking to you. Because there are several voices, and you need to know which one that you need to listen to. And that comes by reading the word of God, that comes by studying the word of God, that comes by praying to God, and then listening to what God is saying to you without distractions. Because in this world, that's what we come to be, learn to be entertained with a whole lot of distractions. And there's nothing wrong with entertainment, but when it takes up the bulk of your time and it draws the separation between you and your God, then that's an issue. That is a problem. And this is why we have problems and keep problems. Because if you know in the Word of God and all these testimonies that said, Folks had problems. They had dying problems. They had all sorts of things. They were poor. They were they were they were sick. They were dying. They need healing. They need their mind change. They had demon possessions. They had all these things. But when they heard that Jesus was coming by, uh -huh. see, they heard that he was coming. That's when they cried out unto him, and then he delivered them from their ailment. So they didn't keep it. It didn't last. 10, 20, and 40 years after they heard. It lasted that long before they heard, like the woman that issued of blood. She had it for a long time until when she ran into Jesus and she was able to touch the hem of his garment. So if we don't hear the voice of the Lord, then we're stuck with everything that comes to us. But once you hear the voice of the Lord, then now comes your deliverance. Then now comes your strength, because he says, when you are weak, I am strong. And so the only thing that's weak with us is the flesh. The flesh is the only thing that's weak, but then it will try to possess us to tell us that that's the strongest thing you got. Because when you're meek and you're humble, when you're strong, because that's when now God steps in, and now he's on your side, that he will now rebuke the enemy away from you. Do we know the voice of the Lord? Jesus did his best while he was here on earth to show us the light and to show us the way. He gave us all types of principles. He, he gave us even the word to them that when he left, he asked the disciples, why did you stand gazing, looking at me? He said, you have work to do. Go out into the earth and be a light. Do the things that I have taught you. And so to be able to do that, now we have to be teachable. We have to learn to listen to one another. Listen to the wisdom and the knowledge that we may gain understanding, that we can hear the voice of the Lord when he's speaking to you. And especially these times where we have false shepherds, false preachers, false teachings. And we have people, if you notice that, amazingly, they flock to them. You know, as he said, we are few in numbers, but God said, I only need a few anyway. He said, I don't need a lot because I'm God, I'm strong. And a few of y'all can just touch and believe what I say and do what I say and be together in love and harmony as one body. He said, I am strong and you will do wonders on the face of this earth. So it doesn't matter how big your church is. It doesn't matter the name. But what matters is how your heart is with the Lord and with one another. And is your pastor preaching the gospel 
the right way? Did your pastor come in through the door or did he jump in from the side because he wants money for some more money and more money? He teaches about money more than anything. He cares about the money more than the sheep. That ought to give you a sign that you ought to run and flee from that stranger instead of running to the Lord. Because the shepherd is supposed to take care of the sheep. Not the sheep take care of the shepherd. Because God, Jesus, is the shepherd and we as pastors are the under shepherd. And God said, I will take care of you but I got you to take care of my people. Amen. And it's more than just, oh, I'll pray for you, but you just make sure you bring this money up here to me so I, I can do what I need to do. And that's what the church, in most cases, has come to. Don't fall for that trick. Because he came in through the back door. He didn't come in through the front door. And he knows the sheep by name. The pastor should be able to know all the sheep that God assigned to them to call them, to check on them, to look out for them. And when they're in trouble, you remember when Jesus said, the shepherd left the 99 to go get the one and brought him back. That's what he did, because that one means something. So that lets you know how much he cares. So he's told us who to listen to. He's told us who we belong to, whose we are. And we need to know that don't let the enemy beat you down so much that you believe that you are not good enough, that you believe that you are just not right. Don't fall for that trick. Because all of us was born in sin and iniquity. Yes, and then now we are in the righteousness of God. And as we grow and learn this word and being taught, then we become more mature and we sin less as we go forward. So don't get discouraged in well-doing. Continue to follow the Lord and hear his voice. And in closing, know that God is still a healer. Know that God is still a deliverer. And know that we say we trust in God, but ask yourself this question. Can God trust you? Think about that. Can God trust you? See, ask yourself these intriguing questions as if we call for God all the time for everything. Once we got our self in trouble. Uh, I was talking to Reverend uh, Gan Tris again, and this 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 song, I, I don't remember the name of the guy that sang the song, but it's called Deliver Me. And in that, the song says that I hurt myself. I hurt myself. And God, I need you to deliver me. Because the things that I do, I think I'm doing it towards you. But I'm hurting myself. And she says, deliver me from this. I need deliverance. For whatever it is in my life that falls short of the glory of God. Deliver me. See, so if we focus on us and our wrongdoing and our down, and God delivers and pick us up, and we can show love, love will kill all sins and iniquity. Love is just that strong. And you have to trust God, because if you look at Jesus, he loved the world. God the Father loved the world. That he gave his only begotten son. Why did he do that? Because love conquers all. It conquers everything. But we have to get the definition of the word true love. Not the way we use it here on the earth in the flesh. That's not the type of love that God is talking about. Can we hear his voice? Can we be taught by God? It's never too late. Trust God, believe God, and walk with God. Amen. Amen.
this is his second time bringing the message to us, and as always, he does a wonderful job. He puts so much into uh, his message and really encourages us, and it challenges us to do better. Amen. As we come down to the end of our worship time together, I want to remind everyone, well, bring it to your attention because some of us don't know. We're having our board meeting on next Saturday at 11 o'clock. So we got some things that we need to discuss. As you all know, um, our tenant that was in the parsonage uh, passed in September. And uh, there's some decisions that we need to make concerning our parsonage and some other church matters that we need to talk uh, about as well. So please, Saturday morning, 11 o'clock in the education building, uh, we'll meet. So I'll see you there. Are there any other closing announcements or uh, concerns? Okay, hearing none. Again, thank you for coming this morning. We pray God's blessings upon you as always. And as I always say to you, if God has touched you, blessed you today, go out and be a blessing to someone. There's someone that needs to know that God still sits high and looks low, that he still has all power in his hand, that he can do that which needs to be done in our lives. Share that. Yes. Yes, I, I'm, I'm, thank you. That's Father uh, Achilles and uh, Abe, and I'm, I'm sorry, but I can't remember your name. Yeah. Yeah, well, I, they, uh, we, we spoke on last night and told us they were coming today uh, to meet with me, and we're so glad that they're here. Good to see you. This is our friend from the Coptic Church. Yeah, that worships here. Well, was worshiping, worshiping here for a little while, and uh, they're back. Amen. 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 Father, you want to come say a word to us? Come on, Father. Come say a word to us. The first, it, uh, Barbara, he called me last week. Yeah. You know the first thing he asked me? Oh. How is Barbara Brown? <laughs> <laughs> he is such a sweet man. He wants to help Father, people in the church. Good to see you, my friend. I am good. Can I see you? Read us. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, one God, amen. It took my attention, this icon, that's a beautiful icon, the Lord Jesus Christ, is a sewer. A sewer is spreading his word to everyone, no matter what. The good ground, the rocky ground, the sideway ground, and the good ground, it produces one of them very 1600. The type of ground is the type of our heart. Yes. So we always ask ourselves, what type of heart that I am? Do I take the seed in the word of God? The sower is a God. God is a sower. So we always ask ourselves, what type of ground am I? Do I accept the word of God and I save it in my heart? Are my heart is a rocky soil? Am I hypocrite? I seem to like beautiful soil from outside, but inside of me is rocks. Or I am a good ground, it produces 30 and 60 and half. The beautiful that God accept. If you have an exam, and you get 30% of the exam, you fell. 60, you are failing. But the Lord is beautiful, except the 30, except the 60, except the 100. God is willing. There is a question. So there is a ground or a land, it produces 30, and the other produces 60, and the other produces 100. What is the fault of the land? What is my fault? Is I'm a background, so 
uh, uh, is it my fault or God's fault? God created me like this. What do you think? Why certain land reduce 30, the other reduce 60? Why the other one uh, reduce 100? What do you think? Any opinion? God created you a beautiful land, a beautiful ground. God created us as his own image and his own likeness. But it is our fault. You know, the Thayyid book, land, it's arrogant. It's uh, put herself higher than everybody. It doesn't allow the flower to go inside of it. Take all the dust or to take all the rocks or take all the bad things. It prevent the word God interact in your life. So ask yourself, what type of grammar? So what should I do to be a good grammar? Number one, number one. The beautiful thing that's the, the sewer is one, the, the climate is one, the water is one. It's everything is the same, but the different, it is type of ground. We ask ourselves, what should we do to be a good ground and to produce 30, 60, and 100? Number one, let's be humble a little bit. Let, let the brewer go our, to our ground and take the rocky. Thing. It will be the word God produce 30, 60, 100. Number two, it has to get beautiful nourishment. What is the nourishment? The word of God. Yes. Word of God. So some person, you like God, you know, like how much you spend with the gospel. How much you spend in your prayers. How much time we spend with God. Remember, we are all visitors here in this world. Just to it, God sent you here for a message to spend some time with Him. Uh, we, if we could not spend some time with God here when we are in the earth, so we cannot spend the eternity with Him upstairs. So we ask ourselves, which direction are we? The also, the, 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 there is another type of ground, it has thorns. The thorn is gone and show this planet and to take all the nourishment. What the thorns, the Lord just starts explaining. The worry of the woman, why you are worried? We are very worried nowadays, why? God always care for you. God always take care of you. So why you worry? Don't worry. You know, you remember the word of God in the gospel, it mentioned that 365 times, do not be afraid. Do not worry. It's a delivered message for each and every one for us. Every day, God told you, do not worry. So why you worry? That the thorns, it choke the plants, the worries of the world. Worries. Number two, it's a... Uh, Number two, it's uh, that just uh, all your care about God. Sorry, I get more than that. We love to hear with you guys. I'm sorry that uh, God bless you all. Uh, thank you for all your hospitality. God bless you all. And uh, I wish to say the prayers for us as we always remember you all in our prayers. God bless you. God bless uh, our pastor Moses and everyone has spent some effort to let the service going on, uh, maybe the Holy Spirit inflame our heart and bless our life all together. Glory be to God forever. Amen. 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 We got a double dose today. Amen. So we stand now. And the church say amen. amen. Everybody say amen. Everybody say amen. Everybody say amen. Amen. Let the choir say
Jesus the Christ, the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit, and the love of God, the Father Almighty, be with you now. May he rest and rule in your lives. May he bless you, that you might be a blessing to others. Go in the name of Jesus. Amen. <laughs>